Hey everybody, uh, this one is the passport. This is part one, by the way, passport to advanced math uh, questions here. So um, uh, this uh, involves uh, knowledge and skills built from your heart of algebra questions. And you're thinking, what is that? Okay, so you need to have a high comfort level with working with quadratic equations and expressions. Uh, including the foiling and factoring, and I have some lessons on foiling and factoring for you if you if you're, um, uh, need some help with that. So translating word problems into algebraic expressions or equations, solving lots of quadratics, and then uh, you need to pay attention to the detail because uh, I like to say they hate teenagers. They try to trip you up wherever they can, and so they may state uh, up in the very beginning that you have x is greater than zero. So that means when you solve for x and one of them's negative, you got to get rid of the negative one. Exponential growth and decay, exponents and radicals, and then uh, domain and range and roots, zeros, solutions, all the same thing. A root is a zero is a solution. Okay, so this is 28% of the new SAT. So there's 58 questions, about 16 of them will have this stuff. So let's try some of these, okay? All right, so if x cubed minus y cubed equals 35, x squared minus y squared equals negative 5, and x squared plus 2xy plus y squared equals 1, what's the value of xy? Okay, and then they state this, x, y, x plus y does not equal 1. Okay, this has factoring smelling all over that, you guys. So, we need to factor everything, you guys, and the key point is x plus y doesn't equal 1. So, when we get one of them to be 1, we disregard that 1. Okay, and I have a factor, a factoring unit on, on uh, a unit on factoring, sorry, at MrMathBlog.com. So if we go all the way over to MrMathBlog.com, it's at the very right. See that link right there, factoring? I have four lessons. It'd be less than 20 minutes if you just watch those, and you would be studs or studettes at factoring. So I'm not going to spend time going over that because we don't have time, you guys. So I'll teach you how to factor that really easy, that really easy, and that that really easy along with some other stuff okay so uh, x cubed minus y cubed is x minus y times x squared plus xy plus y squared it's really easy just watch that video okay still equals 35 x squared minus y squared is x plus y x minus y and finally, x squared plus 2xy plus y squared is x plus y squared. Okay, we need to recognize that before we can tackle this problem. Let's begin with this one here, x plus y squared equals 1. Okay, that means when we square root both sides, we get plus or minus 1. Now remember, it doesn't equal 1, so we got to take the negative 1. So x plus y equals negative 1. Now we'll look at uh, the second part, x plus y times x minus y equals negative 5. We'll substitute in negative 1 right there okay so that's going to give us um, uh, x minus y equals positive 5 because we divided both sides by negative 1 right there we get positive 5 so we have the two equations we have uh, x plus y equals negative 1 and we have x minus y equals positive 5 now we solve I'm going to go ahead and add those equations together and get x equals 2 okay so we got to solve for y so y equals negative 3 the questions asking for x y so that's x times y so choice a is our answer and note this wasn't needed that was in there to just burn some time because they hate teenagers they try to trick you all right so um, find the uh, what is the greatest possible value for the x intercept okay so solve for y you guys so the x intercept is when y equals zero okay so if we solve for y we get this equation and then factor that factors to x plus four x minus I'm sorry x plus five x minus four don't forget the negative you factor it out Okay, so the x-intercepts are negative 5 and positive 4. Okay, so which one's the greatest one? 4 is the greatest one. Choice D. Okay, notice negative 5 is a choice right there. That's another trick. They're trying to trick you. All right, okay, so if the equation below, B is a constant right there, so we're going to foil that mess out on the left or, or multiply it out. If the equation is true for all values of X, what is, what is B? Okay, so let's multiply it out. We get that. Let's combine like terms with the X squareds and the X's. So we have, um, uh, we have a B 
plus a 3 for the x squared, and we have a negative 2 plus a th uh, 3b for the, for the x's right there. Okay, so remember, this stuff equals this side right there. Okay, so that means, you guys, that the b plus 3 must equal the 6, because that's what's in front of the x squared, and the 7's in front of the x, so that must mean 7 equals that. All right, so both equations give us b equals 3 right there. Okay, so choice b. All right, so if m equals 6x squared minus 19x minus 7 and n equals 2x squared minus x minus 21, which is the following expressions equivalent to m over n? More factoring, you guys. So, so when we factor that and put them on top of each other, the 2x minus 7s cancel and we get choice C. Okay, which of the following is equivalent to 16x to the 4th minus 4y squared? Well, first pull a 4 out, okay? And then this is a difference of squares. Difference of squares factors to this pattern, x plus y, x minus y, okay? So this factors to uh, choice C right there, okay? Again, got to go fast to save time. All right, so what for values of x is f of x equal 2x plus 2 equal to this one. So we're going to set them equal to each other and solve for x, make it equal to 0, and then factor. And then so we get x equals 0 or x equals 1, choice b. All right, so this equation, ax to the fourth, we've got to recognize it's to the fourth, so the degree is 4. Okay, that's our first instinct. When a degree is 4, what could n be right there? Okay, so... So, uh, look at these graphs right there. Well, if it, the degree is 4 right there, all right, we're just looking at the graphs right there. It has an even degree, so either they're both going up or they're both going down, so they shoot down. I don't have any that are both shooting down. This is an odd degree right here. This is an odd degree right here. We can get rid of choice B and C. All right, so that X to the fourth, um, suggest you guys that it's going to be a little bit flatter especially when you're dealing in the hundreds down here you know if I'm dealing with you know x equals 1 and um, and I raise it to the fourth power it's not going to have much change in the hundreds so it's going to be it's going to be choice a on that one right there okay all right a car is traveling at x feet per second the driver sees a red light and after 1.5 seconds reaction time he finally applies or she finally applies the brake. So after the brake is applied, the car takes X over 24 seconds to stop, during which time the average speed of the car is X over 2 feet per second. Okay, so a lot of stuff there. If the car travels 165 feet from the time the driver saw the red light to the time it comes to a complete stop, which of the following equations can be used? All right, I just shrunk that up right there. Okay, so first of all, during that 1.5 seconds reaction time, the car is still traveling at x feet per second. So remember, distance equals rate times time. So the distance is going to be uh, the 1.5 times uh, times the, the rate right there. So so uh, the rate times time, so uh, uh, 1.5x, okay? Distance equals rate times time. So the average speed of the car during the, uh, the next uh, uh, interval, it takes x over 24 seconds to stop. So the average speed is x over 24 seconds braking, uh, and the interval is x over 2 seconds per feet. So remember, distance equals rate times time. The rate is x over 24. The time is uh, x over 2 feet. So when we, uh, we multiply those, we get x squared over 48 right there. And since the total distance the car traveled is 165 feet, we have this equation, uh, this distance plus this distance, and we can do this distance plus this distance, but typically your x squared is first right there, okay, uh, equals that. And then we're going to multiply by 48 because we want to get it in one of these equations right there. So when we multiply by 48, Okay, so this times 48 is x squared, this times 48 is um, uh, 72, and then this times 48, and we subtract it, and we get choice, choice D, finally. Okay? All right, so what are the solutions here? Set it equal to zero. Use the quadratic formula because that does not factor. So when we use that quadratic formula, hopefully, hopefully you guys know that by now. We plug those in, and we get uh, choice D. Okay, all right, so if x is greater than zero, so here's one where x is greater than zero. So when we solve this, one of the answers will be less than zero, and it's not that answer. What is the value of x? Okay, so this factors to that. So when you set that equal to zero and you, um, 
each factor equal to zero. We get here, we get x equals negative three, so it's not that one because it says x is greater than zero, so it's a one third on that one. All right, so what is the sum of the solutions? Okay, so the sum of the solutions, let's do some uh, reminding, you guys. Let's go back. If we had, this has nothing to do with this except to remind you of your plus or minus solution. If we had x squared equals 25, both 5 squared and negative 5 squared equals 25. So when we square root both sides, don't forget your plus or minus. So similarly, if we had this equation, x minus 3 squared equals 25, we, squ we still square root to get x minus 3, but it's always plus or minus the square root of 25. So here it's going to be 3x minus 1 is going to be plus or minus the square root of this, which is x plus 3. So it's plus or minus that. So we solve the two equations, 3x plus 1 equals x plus 3, 3x plus 1 equals negative x plus 3. And here's negative x plus 3, distribute the negative through. All right, so solving both of those, we get x equals 2 or x equals negative 1 half. So there's the two solutions. This is saying what is the sum of those two, two solutions. So sum means we're going to go ahead and add those together and we get three halves. All right, I'm not done. We still have part two of this, you guys. That's coming up next. Take care.